Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. We start in the name of Allah Azza wa Jal, the one who necessarily exists, Ar Rahman, the universally merciful Ar Rahim, the particularly merciful. And amongst his particular mercies that he has given us is that he has made us believers. And not only has he made us believers, he has particularly made us believers from the Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That he has given faith to those that might have came, come before. And he has, he has not taken anything from their right. That when they did a deed, Allah Azza wa Jal gave them the reward of a deed. And that when they committed a sin, they would, have the, they would have the recompense of a sin. But for the Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah Azza wa Jal has multiplied the deeds of each act by at least 10. And for the deeds that one does wrong, those deeds that we should not be committing, Allah Azza wa Jal only takes us into account for that one deed and does not multiply it whatsoever. The He Azza wa Jal has made attaining His proximity and His Jannah and His pleasure easier on this Ummah. This is from the Khasa'is, from the particularities of the beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that Allah has give, given him that sharaf, Allah has given him that honor. That he has made this ummah the best of umam, the best nations that have come out to mankind merely as a way of giving sharaf, of giving honor to his Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that comes with the responsibility. This responsibility is that we are the flag bearers of deen in the time when there are no, in the times when there is no deen. We are the flag bearers of religiosity and of, and, and of godliness. When others have forgotten what godliness is. When others have left the ways of the prophets, the Ummah of Isa alayhi salam has left the message that he came with, the Ummah of Musa alayhi salam has left the message that he came with. The Ummah of Ibrahim alayhi salam has left the message that he came with. And we have come as revivers of that message. That there is a burden on the believer. That they are flag bearers of the, of the word La ilaha illallah. That there is no deity except Allah. That there is no one who has hukum, who has rule other than Allah azza wa jal. That there is no other who has worth other than Allah Azza wa Jal. If anything has worth in this, in this world, it is because Allah Azza wa Jal gave it worth. Had it not been for Him, it would have not had any worth attached to it. And Allah has attached worth to us because of our relation to Him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat nas. That you are the best of people who have ever come out to mankind. You enjoin that which is good, of course, with wisdom. And you forbid that which is evil, of course, with wisdom. But if we allow ourselves to become distant from what is good, and allow ourselves to engage in things that we should not be engaging, we have lost the reason that we are khayr ummah, that we are the best nations. And in a manner we are, in some manner we are being in, ungrateful for the blessing of being of this ummah, of the ummah of our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That Allah has made it easy for this ummah to attain, attain jannah. Previous ummah, if if the previous nations would do a deed, Allah would give them the reward of the deed to its fullest extent. He wouldn't take away from their right. Out of his love for the Prophet he gives this ummah at least 10. And it's our responsibility to act on that love. Right? To do something about it. To become people who are worth, to become people who are, it is appropriate to call us flag bearers of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. To be people who become more prophetic. To be people who have mercy in our hearts for the people, we the people that have justice in our hearts, people that have Allah Azza wa in our hearts. That we have mercy in our hearts because we, because we recognize that this world came out as a mercy. 
This world came into being as a mercy. Allah could have put some in Jannah and some in Jahannam and He would not have to answer to anyone for that. It would have been, been His choice. But as a mercy unto us, He has allowed ourselves to test, He has given us the opportunity to show us ourselves whether we deserve one destination or the other, whether we deserve the fire, whether we deserve His paradise. And sometimes it seems as if paradise is in, an insurmountable mountain and it, it is difficult to get. Sometimes it may seem like that. And that we should know that Allah Azza wa has He has given us Jum'ah for expiation of deeds between one Jum'ah to the other. He has given us Ramadan as expiation between the misdeeds that we have between one Ramadan to the other. He has given us Hajj, the pilgrimage to the, to the house of Allah. He has given us Hajj and He has allowed us to know where to, where to make, make pilgrimage. He hasn't left it for us to figure out. And He has given us the rights of pilgrimage. What do you do when you make that pilgrimage? He did not have to give that to us. But He out of His mercy gave that to us. And when you make that Hajj, that is, that is an expiation of all the misdeeds you may have done in your life. And then between the prayers, the expiation of the misdeeds we may do in between prayers. The adhkar that we recite in the morning is expiation for the misdeeds we may have had from the previous night. And the adhkar we recite at night is expiation for the misdeeds we may have had in the day. There is no reason that a believer should feel as if Jannah is difficult. Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal says in a hadith Qudsi, so this is the wording of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in which he expresses the meaning Allah Azza wa Jal is conveying. أَنَا عِنْدَ ظَنِّي عَبْدِي بِي That I am according to the opinion of my, of, my, of my servant. If we see Allah Azza wa Jal as some entity that wants to punish us and wants to make our lives difficult and wants us to bring us out of the comfort of our beds Every fajr, if we see him as an entity that wants us to, to hunger, uh, wants us to hunger ourselves through the fast, and to deprive ourselves of wealth because of zakat, deprive ourselves of our base desires by ha having preference for the other. If that's how we see him, Azza wa Jal, as someone who wants to, to wants to give us difficulty, then that is how we will find him, Azza wa Jal. And if we believe him to be a merciful God. That it is true that Allah punishes. Allah has attributes of rigor. But He has allowed His mercy to overwhelm those attributes of rigor. وَسِعَتْ رَحْمَتِي كُلَّ شَيْءٍ That my mercy overwhelms all things, encompasses all things. If that's how we see Him and we see these acts of obedience as an opportunity to gain the, the, the rahmah of Allah, the, the mercy of Allah. If we see tawbah, as an opportunity for us to turn back to Allah, to the one that is, our, is the greatest beloved, Azza wa Jal. As a way to orient, orient ourselves to the one who has, give, who, has, who has given us the most beloved things to ourselves, our faith. If we see it as that opportunity, then there is no reason that one should, ha, should despair. Every moment is an opportunity of receiving His mercy, Azza wa Jal. Every moment. If we see the opportunity of preferring the other when there's not enough to share, but still preferring the other over the desires of ourselves, and when we prefer somebody else, Allah Azza wa prefers us. If we see that as an opportunity, there's no reason for us to despair. So we're in the balance between khawf and raja, reverent fear of Allah Azza wa that yes, we do know that He is the all-powerful Creator who can punish us. But that we did not allow that to allow us to despair because we also have hope in Him Azza wa Jal. That He will not disappoint us if we, if we expect Him to be a merciful Lord, that He will not disappoint us. In spite of the, of the deficient actions we bring, He will not disappoint us. He will accept that, he will accept that deed, so long as we believe that He will. 
And we do it with sincerity. Because he Azza wa Jal asked. That we see he has made it easy to attain his Jannah. And that we have, he has sent the Prophet ﷺ, his most beloved, to us. And he has made us part of that Ummah. That Ummah which the, at the end of times, the Prophet ﷺ said that his Ikhwan, that his brothers, he called us our brothers and sisters, by extension, that their actions are worth 50 of the actions of the Sahaba. There, are, there is no better creation after the Prophets other than the, uh, the Sahaba are the best creation after the Prophets. Best of creation after the Prophets. But Allah Azza wa Jal has given us the reward of 50 of the Sahaba in the, in, in the end of times. And the end of time starts with the, with the coming, with the advent of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that him and the hour were sent like this and he put his two fingers up and it was a closed space in between his two fingers. We understand that we aren't in those times. And that when we are people who hold on to Iman, when everyone else is leaving Iman, we hold on to godly principles when everyone else is leaving godly principles. Because it's not the norm. Because it's not attractive. Because nobody else is doing it. When we hold on to it because it is from Allah and His Messenger وسلم, that we have the reward of 50 of the Sahaba. And what is their reward? Radiallahu anhum. Allah has not made it difficult for us to attain Jannah. And if we believe that He will reward us with 50 of our rewards to be multiplied 50 on top of the 10, 500 times, on top of however much the reward of the Sahaba is multiplied, we don't, we don't even know how to enumerate that. These are the people who threw themselves in the Prophet ﷺ with, to, to defend him from arrows, to defend him from what is their reward? We don't know. So how much reward does Allah Azza wa give us? And if we feel if that is not sufficient, then Allah Azza wa has given us the salat on the, on the Prophet Sallallahu Allah says, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi Ya ayuhal ladhina amru sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Oh, Allah and His angels send their, their prayers and salutations upon the Prophet Sallallahu Allah lets you know that He does that. And this is the only Prophet that Allah commands to send salawat on that Prophet. And then when you do it, Abu Hurair radiallahu anh came to the Prophet and he said, if I made this much of my dua, salawat upon you, would it, be good, would, it, would, it, would it be good for me? And he said, it would be good for you if you're placed and did more, that'd be better. And he said, how about if I made it this much? And then this much, and then so on and so forth. How about if I made this much of my, my, my dua as this much of my, if this much of my dua was prayer upon you, sallallahu alayhi wa would that, would that be good for me? He said, it'd be good for you. And if you did more, it's better. Until he said, if I made my entire dua, salawat upon you, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, would that be good for me? He said, it'd be good for you and all your worries would be taken care of. Whatever intention you have between, behind the salawat, it's taken care of. And when you make that salawat, as is narrated in the, in the, in, in, by Al-Hakim in his Mustadrak, he says, two narrations, that one, he says that that part, that salawat is, is, shown to me and the one who did the salawat is shown to me and then the father of the one the parents of the one is shown to me and then i send salawat back upon him and his family how much mercy do we receive in that how much mercy do we receive in that so allah has not made it hard if jannah is our aspiration and that is our concern if allah is our concern then the salawat upon him وسلم, will suffice you for that concern this obviously does not relieve us of fulfilling our obligations. It does not relieve us of staying, of staying away from His prohibitions, Azza wa Jal. But it's just to show the mercy of Allah that He has given us so many avenues. So we thank Allah Azza wa Jal for those avenues. We, we ask that Allah make His people of gratitude of those avenues that He has given us to achieve, achieve His proximity, achieve His Jannah. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين يا قوم استغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi, wa sahbihi, wa man wala.
Allah Azza wa has given us Jumu'ah as expiation for the misdeeds between one to another. And on that day of Jumu'ah, He has given us a moment that when you ask Allah, so long as it's not something Allah has prohibited, Allah will give it to you. Allah will give it to you. Whether you see it in this dunya, or if it comes in, in the form of warding off some harm that is coming to you, whether Allah Azza wa is storing something better for you in the Akhirah, in that hour, Allah says, Allah, the Prophet has promised that Allah will give you something, give you what you ask for. And usually that's in between the two khutbahs, that, that most of the ulama say that's between the two khutbahs and the Jumu'ah. When, when we sit down and we say that, uh, I've said what I've said, so let's seek the, the, the forgiveness of Allah, right? And for all the believers, that moment, if we ask for istighfar, if we ask Allah that, Ya Allah, I want you to cover the sins that I have. That those who make tawbah to Allah and do good deeds, then those are the people who Allah not only erases their misdeeds, Allah replaces their misdeeds with good deeds. So that you're not embarrassed in front of Him on the Day of Judgment when He doesn't say, why did you do such and such action? That action that you, may, that you have done is covered. And it's replaced with a good deed. So may Allah make us a people of maghfirah, Allah make us a people who have rahmah in our hearts, Allah make us a people of ithar for others so that Allah has ithar for us, Allah Azza wa make us a people of salawat upon His beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah makes us a people whose worries and anxieties are, 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 are removed by His right sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah Azza wa make us a people who are consistent on enacting His, enacting his command, commandments and avoiding His prohibitions, Allah Azza wa be, allow us to be people who take those opportunities, to, to, to find His forgiveness and His rahmat and, his, and his, his mercies. May Allah Azza wa make us a people who are recipients of His mercy both in the dunya and in the akhirah. May Allah make us, people, make us vessels of mercy. That others find the mercy of Allah through us. Allah makes us a people who, where, where others find the mercy of Allah through us. May Allah Azza wa allow us to, allow us to have our, our deeds multiplied many fold but beyond numbers that we can imagine. May Allah Azza wa cover our sins. May Allah Azza wa forgive us for our misdeeds. May Allah Azza wa give us solace in Him Azza wa Jal. May He make may He be our only source of salam. We say Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam. Tabarak ya dhan jalali wa ikram hayyina wa dhilna dar salam. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirah hasana wa qina adab al-nar. Rabbana habdana min azwajina wa dhuriyatina qurra ta'ayni wa jalna lima taqina imama. May Allah Azza wa Jal have mercy on our parents, our, on our teachers, particularly our first teachers, our parents. So we say Rabbi rahmhuma. Kama Rabbi yani sagheer. 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 Allah have mercy on them as they had mercy on us when we were young. May Allah Azza wa allow us to recognize that Allah and His angels send the prayers and peace upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we're asked to do the same. Inna Allahu wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala nabi Ya ayuhan ladhina amru sallu alayhim sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala azwaji Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ashabi Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ahbabi Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala atba'i Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ummati Sayyidina Muhammad wa barik wa sallim wa salli alayhi Inna Allahu yamunu bil adli wal ihsani wa ita'i dhin qurba wa inhaanin fahshai wa munkari wa baghi Ya'idhukum na'allakum tathakkaroon Wa ta'i akhi, aqim as-salam